أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنما التوبة على الله للذين يعملون السوء بجهالة ثم يتوبون من قريب فأولئك يتوب الله عليهم وكان الله عليما حكيما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ثم اما بعد السلام عليكم قران ويكلي today inshallah the 17th ayah of surah an-nisa and in this ayah i want to share with you something about turning back to allah and allah turning back to you allah says inma at-tawbatu ala allah that turning back truly turning back to allah only really takes place when the following happens. In other words, that innama in the Arabic is a word that suggests exclusivity. So when you think of repentance to Allah, it, you can only really truly think about it in the following terms. That's the benefit of the word innama in the beginning of this ayah. He says, innama tawbatu ala Allah. Certainly repentance, one way to think about this ayah, certainly repentance is mandate, Allah is mandating it on Himself to accept your repentance if it meets the following conditions. Absolutely, he'll accept it. لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ سُوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ It is acceptable for those who, who did something very evil, ugly, disgusting, despicable. This is all within this, the range of the meanings of the word su بِجَهَالَةٍ Out of overwhelming emotion. Temptation, anger, you know, depression. Some emotion took them and they got overwhelmed and they acted out. And in that, same, in that sense, they did an act. They did, they did a sin. You know, this is jahala. Perhaps your laziness is a kind of jahala when you, you know, one time fail to wake up for fajr. Maybe your anger is a form of jahala when you raised your voice at your father. Maybe your, you know, your temptation is a jahala when you refuse to change the channel when something filthy came on. These are all expressions of jahala. Allah says, for the one who did something ugly and despicable, when their emotions rose, and then thumma yatubuna min qareebin. And by the way, su, not plural, singular. ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ Then right after, right after, they go and turn back to Allah immediately. When you do a sin, you feel dirty, you feel disgusting, you feel angry at yourself. Or you feel hopeless and say, whatever man, I'm already messed up, what's the point of tawbah right now? You know, what's the point of turning back to Allah right now? Let me just, I'm in no place to be talking to Allah right now. It's too embarrassing. Allah says, that's not tawbah then. Real tawbah is, when you develop this, you know, you made a conscious decision that you're not going to become, you're not going to be violating Allah's commands consciously, you know, or openly, or as a lifestyle choice. You're not going to do that. But that still doesn't mean you're an angel. You're going to make a mistake every once in a while. So when you do make a mistake, immediately you catch yourself and immediately you turn back to Allah. ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ Then Allah says again, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Those people, Allah will turn back towards them. Those people, their tawbah is acceptable to Allah. So this is an important note for you and me. We're, we're never going to be free from tawbah because we're never going to be free from sin. There's always going to be stuff that we're embarrassed about that happens in the course of a day that we shouldn't have done. But the real people of tawbah are the ones who can recognize the sin. Look, avoiding the sin may be impossible. You know, we can fight it for so long. Some sin or another will make its way into our lives. But when, with, with believers, when something bad happens, when, something, when some mishap happens, some flaw happens, then the idea of immediately catching yourself and immediately turning back to Allah, Allah says those are the people that Allah will accept. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا And Allah is fully knowledgeable, fully wise. In other words, Allah is fully aware of where you stand. You know when somebody feels bad, like a guilty person, they come before a judge and they make a case. They can try to play on the emotions of the judge. They can also try to play on, well, the judge, you, judge, you don't know all the facts. Right, so the defense attorney can come and try to give facts. Allah says Allah, Allah already has all the facts. He's alim. He already knows everything. And you're not going to be able to, you know, be, give, the, give an argument that is wiser than Allah Azza wa Jal Himself. So, what can Allah alim and hakima? Allah is wise enough. And Allah is absolutely wise and absolutely knowledgeable to know your case and to know that your tawbah is worthy of acceptance or not. So, I pray that Allah makes us, it put us puts us in the habit in this month of Ramadan of making tawbah regularly and daily, and consciously, and especially not just making tawbah when you go into the masjid and everybody else is making dua, but you start making tawbah when you're driving and you see something you shouldn't have seen, when you're listening to something you shouldn't have heard, 
You know, when you got into a conversation you could, shouldn't have gotten into. When you accidentally, without realizing it, started saying things about your brother or your sister or your father or you know, somebody else in a conversation and you didn't realize it was backbiting. And only then later on, you're not the kind of person who says, nah, that wasn't really backbiting. You're the kind of person who says, you know what, I think that was backbiting. And you check yourself and you make tawbah to Allah immediately. I pray that Allah gives us the gift of tawbah and accepts all of our tawbah in this blessed month of Ramadan. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.